what's up on Power Ass Crew? Today we're working on my 8.8 .8 swap and we're putting in new emergency brake shoes. So I will help show you the, I ain't going to say the easiest way. There might be somebody out there who knows an easier method, but it's not too bad once you get it all figured out. So, if it seems like something you might be interested in, check out the vid. Let's roll. So the first thing we're going to do is take this jigsaw puzzle apart. There's a spring way down below here. Let's take that spring out. It hooks in right there. It comes over to this side. Needle nose pliers. And lay down on the ground. And see if you can grab hold of that rascal. And pull. Take your shoes, kind of pry them off the side a little bit, maybe give yourself a little extra room, grab hold of it. And unhook it, and there's that one, it's off. Ta-da! There's that one. Now get your brake adjuster. Because it's going to give you a little more room to work on the hill. A little more flexibility. Wedge that shoe back. And you should be able to work that adjuster out right there. Now, your shoes start coming falling inward like that. Then we take our springs. I want you guys like a little nail right down the side here with those clips. Take your shoe, wedge it back this way. Because I want to get to this side over here and get it first. Push in on the clip, and that nail wants to walk back with me. Uh, give me just a second. Wedge it over, and of course that's too thick, so wedge that over. Wedge that in to hold it in place. Now from back here to back, and what we got going on here is right there, that little clip right here. What happens is you got like a nail right here. That head needs to slide, come up through this big, bigger hole here. It's in the small slot, kind of like a keyhole type situation. Like you hang pictures or something. It's right there. What needs to happen is pushing that inward and sliding it downward or rock the nail up, let it come through the bigger side of this hole right here, the slot, and it'll pop right out of there. In theory, that is. Let's see what happens. You on know, the back side here, keep it from, because it's in this backing plate, and it wants to push out that way whenever you push this spring in. Push that spring in, hold that this way. And if you can get it just right, you can rock that pin upward and it'll slide out of there. So that's a magic trick there. You sort of push that down just a little bit. That's what I'm doing, I push that down a little bit. That pin was sitting straight. Now that I push this clip down, the pin's sitting like this. So my goal is push in that clip, then rock that pin back up straight like this. It should come right out that slot. Just like that, right there. And I dropped it. There it is. And the kit, the hardware kit, comes with a new pin. And this right here. But the trick to this one is it's got to come through here. Then you got to rotate it and lock it in place. Either one, I mean, you can make it work. So you just kind of take your pick on which one you want to use. These right here are pretty sourish, but just kind of look a little cruddy. I tend to find to pop these in a little easier than I do these, but I, don't know, I guess it's all in how your uh, mojo's flowing that day. So, I'm gonna get the other side, be right back, same trick. What you didn't see is, when I pulled that extension out, holding this side right here out, obviously that shoe jumped inward, which left this to pop outward. 
and let, open that right there up just as pretty as it can please. Grab the whole shoe to pull it back this way and I'm gonna pull the whole lining off of it. Hmm. Good ones. Okay, so now what we got to deal with is we got two springs down inside here. We gotta get that thing separated and out of there. It'll bite you. So I'm gonna hold that one back. Drop it back in there. Pull the shoe outward as much as possible. Like that. Drive the extension back inside there to hold that place. And I'm either gonna use one of two tools. I'm gonna try the needle on those pliers first. Ah, right, there we go. Right there is that one. It's out and. It goes over on this side, hooks to that shoe, pull that out, push it across, and grab hold of it from here, work it out. Work it, work it on out. There we go. Take your shoe, wedge it behind our. Because you got another spring back in the back that's makes life very interesting honestly and I really know 100% convinced that it needs both of those springs and then once you get that up a bit Get them up high enough and that spring will pull them in like that. And we gotta get that one back out of that slot right there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See the rest in right inside that slot right there. Oh, it didn't bit me. And a slot right there. So when you pull them both out of the slot, the spring pulls the shoes together and it's gonna allow you to take the shoes, rotate them around like that, and bring them out. They come unhooked, you just take them out that way. That works too. Either way, it works for me. So, here comes the boring part. I'm gonna clean all this junk up and I'll be back in a minute. And one thing, too, that you want to take, and because this rear and this rear diff right here looks a little bit rusty and crusty, this is the arm right back up inside here. This is where your emergency brake cable hooks onto and pulls to engage your emergency brake. You want to take that out and clean it. So what you do, you push it through the backing cover, backing plate, and rock it back like this direction toward the back. That allows this piece to rotate inward. And, if, and there's coming through a rubber bush, so don't get too froggy on pulling too hard because you don't care if your rubber insert. And just let it work. And there we go. But pay attention to your orientation. See how they're stacked? That does, 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 it does, does matter. Uh, probably can't see it quite yet. Let me look on this side. Because they are marked on how they go. Okay, right there shows left, okay? This is the right side. So this side over here, oh, there it is. They're real faint. Once we clean them up, they a little better. Right. The right side of the vehicle, right side of the axle, in this case, right side of the Jeep, is going to, that's going to face upward. On this right here also, once I take the wire brush to it, clean it up, you'll see an R on this too. It'll stack like that right there, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go put this on the wire brush, then I'm going to get my wire brush to get inside here and clean all this mess up. So that's kind of boring. I'll be back in a minute. Alrighty now, so we got things pretty well cleaned up, better than it was anyway. So let's First thing we gotta do is put our parts back in. Lithium grease, white lithium grease. This is gonna go in into like this orientation. We'll come right like to here, we'll bring it back in like that, and it feeds right on in. But what we need to do between these two parts, if I get this right there, 
we can put a smoke white with in grease. And then right here, if you look, since I got it cleaned up, you see the R right there, right side of the axle. If it's facing up, it's correct. And you see the R right there. Cool, cool. So that'll hang like that, and this will sit like that because both of your R's are facing upward. Okay, get a little bit of. Ooh, the mosquitoes are here, ridiculous. Get some grease. So plenty right there, and don't be shy. Put that like that. That's gonna feed through like this. And also, I'm gonna give you some grease and put a button it here. There's a lip right down here. Yeah, give it this finger better. When it comes to stuff like this, I really, really, really prefer white lithium grease. It seems to be much more water resistant. Any kind of extra grease you got put on the face right here, because whenever you slide your rotor up on there, that white lithium grease will prevent that rotor from being stuck and seizing up on there. It'll help you out in a later moment when you do some of your servicing. Put a little dab inside the groove right there. Inside the groove. Yeah, I know it. what that's going to do is run it out like if there. It's going to help it go through that boot easier and less likely to damage the boot. And also give it a bit more water resistance to help seal the junk out, water and such. So you take and fold your parts back like it's right here a little bit, tuck it up inside there, take that arm and start pushing it out through that boot. And you may have to go to the back side right here and help it feed through. And there's that. And now the fun stuff. These can be like really interesting. They're symmetrical, but there is a top and the bottom. Your flats here, if you notice when you take them off, these are your tops. You notice that's flat here, then you got that groove on the bottom right there, that notch. That notch is where your adjuster sets in at. So that's gonna be at the bottom. So both your notches toward the bottom. Okay, here's where it gets fun and interesting. Take your spring, hook it through, feed it through, and then go ahead and let it come all the way through. Don't worry about hooking on this quite yet. Then we hook it here through that hook, and then we got to finagle it to go behind the axle. Here's that. Then we take one side, see which side be yours? Uh, right over here. Let's take on this side. Okay, and I'm gonna show you why. Let me get the camera real quick. If you look, if the camera picks it up, the bottom plate that we put in right here that piece right here, there's a groove in it that lines up with this top groove. So whenever I slide the top of that shoe in right there, it's going to line both of those grooves up and hold that plate and that a mechanism right there in place while we stretch this one over and put it in place. Let's 
So we'll take this one and make sure your spring is down below all that leverage, lever stuff. Bring that one up, it's over that one. And screwdriver, screwdriver. Okay, this is where things get kind of one of the places that gets kind of cranky. Let me reposition the reposition the Because what you want to do is get the back side of the shoe here and wedge it back there and hope it don't slip and hold it. Tap your shoe along the screwdriver and back. See, that's what I mean. Hope it don't slip. And you hope it don't slip. a little bit lower. Come back. I feel like that better. Let's see if that works better. Okay, we're close. Let's push it a little bit. And it should fall in that groove once it hits that sweet spot. Like that. Tap your shoe down. Because you're crossing up down here, it's got to separate them. And I'm sure somebody's out there, boy, he's doing it the hard way. But I tell you what, down in the comments, tell me if you're there's an easier way. Probably easier to pull the axle, to be honest with you. But I'm just not doing it. This one's got to come back up. Now. We're in the ballpark. Now at this point that we start putting our, possibly put our adjuster in, but when I was doing the other side, I kind of made myself second guess something. Because you got that spring back here, but you got another one at the front. I put this spring right here in last. Did it work? Yes. Was it a pain to tell? <laughs> oh yeah, much, very much. So I'm gonna try something, see if this works. Since the shoes are in closer, it may not be as hard to stretch the spring, but I will definitely have to fight it on the bottom end a bit more. Right there. And where's my brake tools? See, I, get, I use these right here. Grab that hook. I've got it barely hanging on there. Keep that pressure pushing forward. Oh, don't you pop off there. Grab it with a needle on those pliers and almost. There she goes. Now one thing you also got to watch too, all that lever stuff that's down here, make sure it's, this is riding awful high because this has to be pushed back. Let me show you what's going on down there. Those levers right 
there it needs to be sitting on the flat spot of the shoe right here. So all that assembly right there needs to come upward and reseat on the shoe because we're, we're good over here because of that slot. But over here, not so much. That's got to sit on the flat of that. So I need to finagle that in place. Then we'll take care of the bottoms. There she goes. Now she's sitting right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, all right, let's get our adjuster set up. Our adjuster consists of these three parts right here. So what we're going to do is put the bore white lithium grease. Grease her up. Just take your finger drag along the threads right there. And run your star adjuster up on it. That will spread the grease along the threads as you go. I tend to run it all the way in, not past the threads, but just to the edge of the threads. Then we we'll put more right there. Get a little more grease. Put it right around this right here. And for kicks and giggles. There. And, and if you need to wipe off a little bit of the access, that's fine too. So see that little slot right there? We're gonna put these back in. I tend to prefer these, it's got like a keyhole slot in them. I kind of prefer these over uh these right here because you got to push that thing in and turn it simply because the one on this side right here it's back here it's recessed back I'm going to turn you guys upside down you find it right there where my finger stuck at that nail goes up or nail pin whatever you want to call it goes way up inside that right there so it's really hard to hold that thing in place and prevent it from turning or even try to turn it to put it in position so I tend to like these right here better So wedge it back in to shut into place. Don't worry about this side quite yet. Wedge it back to where you're kind of lined, you're lined up. Right there. Now notice it doesn't want to come all the way through. So take this extension and we're going to wedge it against the shoe. Get my head stuck up in the camera. There we go. I like it better. Because then that holds the shoe in place and doesn't allow it to walk around. Now, where did they go? Let me stick my pinky up inside there so I can move it. Yeah. Let that hang on the end of that pin. And let's see. Let's try to straighten it up. Stay, stay. Oh, so close, so close. I don't want to turn this loose. Ah, she goes. Now we do the other side. Now we got this shoe wedged back.
there's just pretty well lined up. The goal is to have that extension right there holding that shoe in place for it not to pop back. Okay, so now we can just and put the back side. It's recessed in good. And get the clip put in place. This one tends to be a bit easier because you can actually you feel it on the surface of this back here. So what you want to do is you take and tilt it a little bit, hang your fingernail on the back side of that little pin, tilt it upward a little bit, push that in then rock that pin down a little bit and I'm working it on the back side back here with my fingernail just flip it back and forth like I show you hanging my fingernail moving it back and forth and it pops that in place yay now we're gonna do the bottom right here so I intentionally got that brake adjuster holding those two shoes open because look right there that is your rubber boot right there you push that rubber boot out you can get your screwdriver side here for your adjuster to open and close it to set the proper preload of your mercy brake on your uh, pad to drum or pad to inside that rotor so what we got right here I've got that position toward the back because I can stick my screwdriver right through here and be able to adjust it so let me see if I can position this to where you can, guys can watch me pop this back in place I've obviously got something on my lens. But my hands are so nasty, I can't clean it right at the moment. There we go. So now what I do is I take my screwdriver, get up inside here, and bite against the side of the axle tube. Then I'll wedge, I'll lever back enough to allow me to move that adjuster. Then I release it and it sets the adjuster right in place. So there's the adjuster, we're good there. And once we center the shoes, it'll pull the adjuster back over this way a little bit so I can reach it with the uh, screwdriver to adjust it later. One more thing. Spring. Spring goes right, there's a hole there, and it stretches over here. Uh. And this spring right here is too uh, crazy strong, so it's not too bad. It just matter getting the right position to get it in there. So I'm gonna pull, let's see, can I do that? that out shift this over a little bit more pull this spring push it in the hole and push it just a little bit more you hear it click there it goes then center up your shoes and you're good to go Sweet. and that's how you put in e-brake and an 8.8 .8. now depending on what year 8.8 .8, it can be a bit different I have seen some 8.8s that only have one spring on this side and also I think these two right here are overkill but oh well they're in there so at this point to save yourself we're not going to adjust the e-brake right now that's going to be a later video because I got to get the cables for the 8.8 .8 going in my rig here but I got to get the e-brake cables and all that fun stuff so we'll just do the setting of the e-brake stuff then but what you want to do now for a little pro tip is get you some lithium grease, smear it on there, and smear it all around through here and around through there. Just you know, it's a little bit overkill, but you got the point. Cover that right there because what that's going to do is prevent your rotor hat from ever seizing up on the axle here. 
and make life a lot easier on you later on. Okay, so it's a little bit heavy, but hey, it was it's gonna work. Slide my rotor on. Now before you go slide your rotors on, if you get brand new like I did, get inside here with your brake cleaner and a good rag and clean the inside the surface up. Clean up your brake surface with brake cleaner and of course on this side as well because they put that protective oils on there and oils and brake pads don't mix because whenever you go to hit your brakes they want to grab. So brake cleaner, good rag, clean the inside and both sides of your brake surface here. And there it is looking all shiny and pretty and stuff. Some of you people out there are doing the 8.8 .8 swaps in your Jeeps. I hope this video helps you. I know it's not the actual swap itself, but I've got that on video and I'm not completely done yet. So that, the whole swapping, all that stuff like that, that video will come later. But just to let you know, it is in progress, as you can see. Drive shaft's hooked up. Uh, purchases are done. Uh, I just got to do up my hard lines, my brake lines and stuff. I still got to take care of all that and... Uh, got the e-brake done now so cool so everyone now you can set up your e-brakes well inside here later on I'll get the uh, cables and I'm gonna move my brake lever I'm not gonna use the foot piece I'm gonna use something different and so once I get all that set up I'll run the mercy brake cables and stuff and show you guys how to adjust it and how to install everything cool cool so everyone if you enjoyed this video hit me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't leave me some cool comments down below Appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.